All right, I'm down to the last piston and I just want to give some tech tips for you guys. Um, I know a couple of you are going to question me, why am I dipping the piston in a bucket of oil when you would just normally just squirt some oil into the rings. But you got to remember that I uh, chemically uh, dipped these pistons to get all the carbon off and the pins are all dry. So that's the only reason why I'm doing this dunk, as I call it. A couple of tech tips. Please read your instructions of the piston rings. There's a right and a wrong way to install the piston rings. There's an up and a down. There's probably a million videos on YouTube about this, but rule of thumb, if there's any lettering or writing on the, the ring itself, that means it points up. Or you're looking for the beveled inner edge to be pointing up because the, the piston rings actually twist and grab the cylinder wall. That's how they're designed. So just read the instructions, you'll be great. Basically installing the piston and the last piston to be installed. Um, you got your um, ultra slick assembly lube. I'm gonna hit this again. We're gonna use a medieval torturing device, which is this damn thing, which sucks. I, I don't know where my other one, my other compressor is. So we're gonna have to deal with what we have to deal with. Very simple, undo, open it up. Remember to stagger your rings. This is just engine building 101. There's probably a thousand videos about this. Uh, unique to the LT1 pistons is that um, we have a short skirt, so it's easier to actually install them. And these are traditionally lighter hypertectic pistons than your traditional small block cast pistons made by Mal, Mal, whatever you call it. So I'm just compressing the piston rings, holding it with one hand and a rag. And it's a real pain in the butt. I should have got my other one, but see how this is uneven. All we're doing is tapping this to be even. That's nice and even. Okay, let's go to the engine block. This is for stock style pistons. 99.999% uh, of any small block Chevy Pistons, I think that applies to Ford and other brands, is that there is an arrow or a dot or something along those lines. And that dot indicates to point the piston towards the front of the engine. And one thing good about this is that usually you always have to worry about how you orientate your rods to your pistons. But since this is a stock motor and we're using reusing the stock pistons and rods, um, it's an easy way to determine what side the fillet or the part of the connecting rod goes to the crank. And there's actually a chamfer or a, I don't know what you would call that, I forget. But this rides along the side of the crankshaft. On the other side, it's flat and that's where the other rod will ride onto. Do not screw this up because <laughs> whatever, you know, if you do that, motor blow up, won't run, that's it. Um, so since we know the orientation, we know this is number seven piston, we know the arrow is facing that way, we know this is gonna line up. So, very simple. Leave a little bit of the piston skirt out. Get you a little bit closer. Line up the piston. These are easy to line up because they have the, the valve reliefs. Basically, you want them straight because the connector rod has to go down out to the crankshaft. Gently tap. Quick note, make sure the crank journal, you can't turn the motor over right now, is straight down so you don't smack the connecting rod bolt to the crank journal because then you have all sorts of problems if you nick the crank. You know you're in, boom, piston is in. All right, let's flip this bad boy over. This is not the ideal way to do this, but with the connecting rod bolt or the connecting rod pushing down, you see how the crank is set up here? I'm gonna move the crank over just a wee bit. There you go. So it's like straight down. Usually you do the engine the other way around, but to show you guys and girls, this is, you know, monkey garage. So basically we're gonna come bang the piston down. Be careful not to nick the crank journal. Boom. She is there. See, don't need no fancy tools, just your brains. Very simple, squeeze the goo. It's a little overkill, but this so you can get a dramatic effect through the sides. OK, 
Okay, same thing with this. You see the radius here, how it's protrude out versus this is actually flat. It goes along the side of the crankshaft over here. Can't screw that up. Another way, when you're taking apart an engine, as we, as we marked the actual rod caps, put it on the side that it's supposed to be so you know, just, you know, as a double check. Boom. Since we have all that oil coming off the piston, the rod bolts are all greasy and full of oil. So it makes a great talking, you know, instead of having to put uh, any lube on the bolts, they're already oiled down, ready to be torqued. Tech tip. Okay, I've already measured the side clearances of the connecting rods, but as you're going through the engine, especially with new parts, as you're going through the motor and everything, just check because they have a certain amount of end play or clearances. And see how they move apart like this? That's the way they're supposed to be. We already checked the side clearances on this, so everything is fine. But if you don't see this and if it's tight, it's binding, stop, 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 and see what's going on. Okay, let's get on with this.